is block seven, the greatest generation, uh, section six, uh, east of the uh, war in Europe, 1943, continued. We were talking about General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was appointed by uh, President Roosevelt to take command of the American forces in uh, all of Europe, which was at that time the North African uh, theater. Eisenhower was a Kansan. He was from the plains of Kansas. He was uh, of German extract, obviously, Eisenhower. I believe his great-grandfather had come over to the United States. Uh, Eisenhower had never actually commanded troops in the field, uh, but he was a superb man of organization. He was a superb leader of men. He was an incredibly organized, concise, and precise mind. He did not have much of a temper. He could easily work with lots of other people, um, which made him an excellent choice uh, for the role that he got and for the roles that he was going to get uh, later on in the war. Uh, he's a solid strategist, not a brilliant tactician, not a brilliant general by any stretch of the imagination, but a solid one, an excellent leader of men. Uh, Eisenhower takes control, it takes command of the American armies when they're kind of um, stuck outside of Tunisia over here, but under his command, uh, with the help of General Patton and the British under Montgomery, uh, by the middle of 1943, the British coming up from this side and the Americans from this, drive the Germans out of North Africa. Instead of attacking German-occupied France, which is what Stalin wanted, that second front, what the Americans and the British do uh, is they decide to attack the Axis, the Germans, in the, what they call the soft underbelly uh, of Europe. And the term comes from an animal, that an animal, when it's up on all fours, has, you know, all sorts of protection. It's got, you know, uh, teeth and claws and it can run, but if you flip an animal up onto its back, you know, its stomach area is exposed, it's soft. Uh, and it was believed that Italy, was kind of the weak link uh, in the axis. So in 1943, launching from Tunisia, first the Allies, the Americans and the Brits, uh, took the island of Sicily, and then hopped from Sicily uh, and invaded Italy in what was known as Operation Husky. Um, Operation Husky uh, captures Sicily, and then Operation Avalanche uh, is the operation that takes over, that attacks into Italy, and then it's a very slow go up the Italian peninsula. In the middle of 1943, the Italians say, we've had enough of this war. Uh, they had had a difficult war fighting in places like Albania. Uh, Germany used lots of Italian troops over on the Eastern Front. The war was deeply unpopular. Mussolini was deeply unpopular. And in 1943, they got rid of Mussolini. Uh, he was deposed by the fascist Grand Council and the king. Uh, he was rescued by German troops, sent up to northern Italy, where he started this fascist northern Italian republic, but nobody really paid him any attention. Uh, but the Germans, the, the Germans were not going to allow the Allied troops to march, you know, that close to, to Germany itself. So Germany, as soon as Italy changed sides, Germany invaded Italy, and now it was not Italian troops uh, that the Allies were facing, which... Uh, were not as good troops, uh, but it was Germans that the Allies were facing. So this slaw, this soft underbelly, turned out not to be particularly soft at all. Uh, that the fight up the Italian peninsula with its rivers and its mountains was very, very difficult against a determined German enemy. Meanwhile, at sea, the Allies win the Battle of the Atlantic. New technology, better destroyers and more of them make the sea lanes not quite safe for merchant shipping, but Great Britain is no longer at in danger of being strangled to death. That more and more and more convoys began to get through, more and more ships began to get through, and the Battle of the Atlantic was won by the end of 1943. Towards the fall of 1943, there was another one of those big political meetings, and it took place in the Persian capital of Tehran, uh, kind of out over here. Um, and it was the first time that the so-called Big Three met. And the Big Three, as you can probably figure out, are uh, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin. Um, and they met, now, 
Churchill had met Stalin, Churchill had met Roosevelt, but Roosevelt had never met Stalin. Uh, so it was the first time that the three of them actually sat down at the same table and through translators, um, with Stalin of course, um, communicating. They agreed on a general war strategy. They agreed that they would crush Germany like a vice, that the Allied powers would crush Germany from the west, that the Soviets would crush Germany from the east. They also agreed that the invasion of France, that long-awaited second front, would take place in the spring of 1944. Preparations were being made. These preparations were enormous. Uh, the entire nation of Great Britain kind of became a depot, uh, a, a jumping off point for this massive invasion. Uh, at the Tehran conference, it was agreed that the overall command of that long-awaited invasion, that joint operation between the Brits and the Americans, that joint command of that operation would be given to an American. Uh, and in fact, Eisen, uh, excuse me, uh, Roosevelt would pick Eisenhower uh, to lead it. This is a very, very important moment in world history. That since the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, Great Britain had been undisputedly the most important country in the world. By the middle of 1943, and it, no one even noticed what had happened. But all of a sudden, in the middle of 1943, the Americans had more troops in uniform than the British did for the first time in the war. And although this invasion would be a joint invasion, the reality of the times, the reality that the Americans were financing the war, they were producing the equipment for the war, made this handoff, this imperceptible handoff, it was not obvious, it was not on the front page of the news, but the fact that it was going to be Eisenhower and not Montgomery who had overall command of this invasion signaled to anyone watching closely enough that the torch had been passed, uh, that Great Britain had passed on the leadership of global responsibility uh, to the Americans. And rarely in human history has world leadership been transformed so peacefully so quietly and between two countries who share so many things in common. The invasion of northern France was pinpointed to the beaches of Normandy, right there, uh, and the attack would cross the channel sometime in the spring of 1944. And when that happened, Stalin would finally have his second 